It's been three months since I switched to the 13 inch MacBook Air M4 as my main laptop. And after putting in hundreds of hours on it, there's a lot worth discussing. During that time, I've used it for basic things like productivity and web browsing, but for the most part, I've been doing a ton of creative work on here, both for things that I wanna learn and explore and to work on some other side projects that I've got going on. And that's given me a pretty good idea of what you can expect to get from it. Today, I wanna dive into what that whole experience has been like. What the M4 Air does really well, where it struggles, and just my general thoughts after having used it over the last 14 weeks or so. So with that said, let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Lowfree. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Over the last few years, the MacBook Air has become more and more capable, almost to the point where for a lot of folks, there's no real need for a Pro machine any longer. Any Mac with Apple Silicon has an insane amount of power and combining that with the portability of the Air, especially in the 13 inch size, makes it much more appealing than almost any other laptop out there. This 13 inch variant weighs in at only 2.7 pounds and is 0.44 inches thick which makes it much easier to pack around with you over a Pro machine and unlike the Pro where you only have two color options, the Air comes with four, one of which is this new sky blue color. This is the first MacBook in a while that I've owned in a lighter color and I do like that it's a lot less prone to fingerprints and showing wear around the USB-C ports and the only thing that I wish Apple would have done is maybe made the keyboard keys a lighter color. Black keys just don't really match up great and I think if they went in the same direction as they do with the iMac with darker versions of the aluminum colors, it would probably match up a bit better but outside of that, I do really enjoy the look of it but the thin design does come with some trade-offs. First of all, this is a fanless design so you're not going to get the active cooling like you do in the Pro models. That will have some effect on performance, which I'll get into in a bit, but it also leaves you with only two USB-C ports, so it does lack some versatility in that sense, but I've rarely noticed it. Where I'm mostly using this away from my desk setup and on the go or around the house on smaller projects, the most I've usually got connected to the Air is a portable SSD, say if I'm editing a piece of content where I've got a bunch of clips that use up a lot of space. It can definitely be a bummer sometimes not having an SD card reader for content and I think in general, if you've got a lot of things that you want to bolt on or connect to it, you'll definitely want a USB hub or a dock. I used the M3 Air last year as my main machine for quite a while and I would just put that in clamshell mode in a vertical stand and hook it up to my CalDigit TS4, which opened up the machine port wise and I could definitely do the same thing here. My M4 Air has no problem running my studio display and while I don't get the Thunderbolt 5 speeds I would on a pro level chip, it's still using Thunderbolt 4, which is really all I need. Thunderbolt 4 can still run external SSD storage faster than the internal drive and supports super high resolution displays. And the M4 Air does have one other trick over the previous generation where it now supports two external displays with the lid open where the M3 Air only did that with the lid closed. Using it in a desk setup will also require using external accessories like a keyboard and mouse. And one keyboard that I've been using a lot of lately is this low free flow 2 which is currently my favorite option for the setup and is why i was super excited to have them sponsor this week's video the flow 2 is a low profile mechanical keyboard made from cnc machined aluminum that has insane quality with a nice minimal look and it has some really neat features there are some standard things like high quality flip out legs and backlit keys that look great but you also get this touch bar on the right side of the keyboard for adjusting brightness and volume and it connects via Bluetooth, USB-C or 2.4 GHz wireless where you can connect multiple devices simultaneously. I've got the Space Gray 100 key option here because I like having a numpad but they also have 84 and 68 key options in the same color or in silver and three switch types, linear, linear, silent and tactile. 
Those keys are also hot swappable, so very easy to switch out if you need to, but the Flow 2 is also super satisfying to type on. And right now you can reserve your spot to pick one of these up for a fraction of what they would cost you a couple of weeks from now. So please check out the link in the description if you're interested. Now, using the M4 MacBook Air on its own away from a desk, I'm obviously not gonna rely on most of that setup gear. And arguably the most important part of using a laptop as a laptop is the display, where I do think the M4 Air is a touch underrated. It's not gonna blow the doors off with great specs by any means. This is a 13.6 inch LCD IPS panel that runs at 60 Hertz, but you get outstanding contrast for an IPS panel with a 1500 to one ratio, 500 nits peak brightness and fantastic color accuracy covering 99% of the P3 gamut. That makes this great for any color critical work. For myself, that's been quite helpful as I've been doing more graphic design and trying to create new looks for videos. I always know that whatever I do on here is going to look the same on all my other screens, which is what you would expect from an Apple display. For other things like browsing the web and to a large extent watching content, things are pretty decent. This doesn't support HDR, so you're not going to get quite as much contrast or pop as the mini LED display in the MacBook Pro. And things aren't quite as smooth as the 120Hz ProMotion display, but the only real area that stands out to me is with gaming or 3D modeling, and I'm not so sure that the M4 Air is cut out for that kind of thing anyway. Make no mistake, performance-wise, the M4 in this particular MacBook is very solid. The version that I have here is one step up from the base version with a 10-core CPU and GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of storage. And for most things, it is very hard to tell the difference between this and my Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra. Obviously, things like watching content and browsing the web or social are going to be fine, but where I've been working more on here with software projects, both in design and coding apps, this is been super snappy where I rarely feel any kind of lag. That being said, the projects that I'm working on are small to medium sized at best and I'm sure if you were going to do something more demanding, things would change. Say if I was running any kind of virtualization or a bunch of services in the background, specifically where I needed more RAM, that 16 gigs probably wouldn't cut it, so if that's something that you plan on doing, it might be worth bumping up that RAM a bit, but still. I've been using this to build JavaScript apps and using smaller Docker setups and building apps in Xcode without any hangups. Occasionally, when I do have too many apps open at once, I will start to see that memory pressure climb up a bit, especially if I'm switching back and forth between them a lot, but even with things like video editing, this is really all I personally need to make videos like these. Video editing is one of the most taxing things that you can do on these Macs, and I ran my whole creative workflow on a machine less powerful than this for years. The timeline on my M4 Air scrolls fine, and I can add clips and go through the whole process, and it doesn't really feel any different on the M4 Pro. And because the M4 and M4 Pro have the exact same media engine, render times are also very similar. The air will be a bit slower where it will warm up and throttle performance and I'm sure it's throttling as I work on a lot of these tasks. I just don't know that it's really perceivable. I would say that the only time that I personally notice it slowing down is when I'm doing something that uses a ton of processing power, like using some of my audio tools that almost always spin up the fans on my other Macs. It's still totally usable, but it's just one of those things where if you're someone that needs quick turnaround times or you're rendering and iterating on things a lot, you may want to look for something with higher performance or say if you're reaching for things that are a lot more GPU intensive, the air will lag behind a bit. For instance, on some of my video editing plugins, things can bog down a bit, and in Blender, the 10-core GPU will struggle with larger complex scenes It does start to feel like a bit of a slog. Some scenes in Blender simply won't even render due to it not having enough memory. Now again, bumping up the RAM will solve for some of that. 
The 24 gigs in the base M4 Pro MacBook seem to handle things much better there, along with a better GPU. So if you are into things like 3D modeling and you plan on being more than just a hobbyist, I would probably upgrade to something more powerful than the Air, but say if you're creating models for 3D prints or just making simple assets in Blender, the M4 Air is gonna feel quite smooth. The only thing that I'll say about this configuration outside of this is you may want to look at expanding the storage a little depending on what you're doing. Even at 512 gigs, if you're using Xcode at all with simulators, it doesn't take long for that to fill up and video editing can eat up an enormous amount of space. So you can either bump up the spec on the machine itself or you can do what I do and just use a portable drive to alleviate that. Portable drives are a lot cheaper, but like I said in my external SSD video I made a couple of weeks ago, they will chew through your battery life faster, as will doing most of this resource heavy stuff, but the battery life on the M4 Air is probably one of the best things about this machine. If you're only using the Air for basic things like web browsing or watching content, this can easily last multiple days. There are times where I've just used this to watch an hour or two of content and shut it down in between uses and it lasted over a week. Ramping up usage a little more when I'm coding or doing design work, I can get well over a full day of use and even video editing can last around eight hours or so, but that will go down to around five or six if I'm using a lot of effects or plugins. Like I said, super resource heavy stuff will suck back the battery even faster in some cases, but outside of the MacBook Pro, you'd be really hard pressed to find a laptop with better battery life than this. I've also seen absolutely no battery degradation, which I really wouldn't expect on a machine this new, and by and large, the M4 MacBook Air probably has the best value out of any laptop out there. The build quality is outstanding, the screen has great color accuracy and a decent picture, and you can do most things on here without any slowness or lag. Sure, there are going to be some areas where it won't be the most ideal machine, like really resource intensive graphics work, and increasing the RAM will serve you better in very specific instances, but for 95% of people, this is likely all you need, and frankly is probably still overkill in a lot of cases. To be honest, whenever I use this at my desk instead of my Mac Studio, I find it very difficult to tell the difference between them most of the time, and having the ability to pick this up and work on anything I want with no fan noise and great battery life makes this an absolute joy to use. I am going to be looking at some other Mac alternatives in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that. And if you've got the M4 Air yourself and you want to bring up something that I did not mention here, Feel free to drop a comment down below, but that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me make an app that plays royalty free medieval loot music every time you save a file, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.